Chapters 5 through 8 of the Gospel according to Luke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 5 through 8. Chapter 5 On one occasion the crowd was pressing on him and listening to God's message, while he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He, however, saw two fishing boats drawn up on the beach, for the men had gone away from them and were washing the nets. And going on board, one of them, which was Simon's, he asked him to push out a little from land. Then he sat down and taught the crowd of people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Push out into deep water and let down your nets for a haul. Rabbi, replied Peter, all night long we have worked hard and caught nothing, but at your command I will let down the nets. This they did, and enclosed a vast number of fish, and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came, and they filled both the boats, so that they almost sank. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at the knees of Jesus, and exclaimed, Master, leave my boat, for I am a sinful man. For he was astonished and terrified, he and all his companions, at the haul of fish which they had taken, and so were Simon's partners, James and John, the sons of Zabdi. But Jesus replied to Simon, Fear not, from this time you shall be a catcher of men. Then, after bringing their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. On another occasion, when he was in one of the towns, there was a man there covered with leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, threw himself at his feet and implored him, saying, Sir, if only you are willing, you are able to make me clean. Reaching out his hand and touching him, Jesus said, I am willing be cleansed. And instantly the leprosy left him. He ordered him to tell no one. But go, he said, show yourself to the priest, and make the offering for your purification which Moses appointed as evidence for them. But all the more the report about him spread abroad, and great multitudes crowded to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But Jesus himself constantly withdrew into the desert, and there prayed. One day he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village in Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present for him to cure people. And a party of men came carrying a palsied man on a bed, and they endeavored to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But when they could find no way of doing so because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiling bed and all, into the midst, in front of Jesus. He saw their faith and said to them, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to cavil, asking, Who is this uttering blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Well aware of their reasonings, Jesus answered their questions by asking in turn, What is this that you are debating in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk. But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, turning to the paralytic, he said, I bid you, Rise, take up your bed, and go home. Instantly he stood up in their presence, took up the mattress on which he had been lying, and went away to his home, giving glory to God. Amazement seized them all. Glory to God! was the abiding feeling. Yet fear flashed through their minds, and they said, We have seen strange things today. After this he went out and noticed a tax-gatherer, Levi by name, sitting at the toll office, and he said to him, Follow me. He rose, left everything, and followed him. Levi also gave a great entertainment at his house in honor of Jesus, and there was a large party of tax-gatherers and others at table with them. 
This led the Pharisees and scribes of their party to expostulate with his disciples and ask, Why are you eating and drinking with these tax-gatherers and notorious sinners? But Jesus replied to them, It is not men in good health who require a physician, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Again they said to him, John's disciples fast often and pray, as do also those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. Can you compel the bridal party to fast, replied Jesus, so long as they have the bridegroom among them? But a time for this will come, when the bridegroom has been taken away from them, then at that time they will fast. He also spoke in figurative language to them. No one, he said, tears a piece from a new garment to mend an old one. Otherwise he would not only spoil the new, but the patch from the new would not match the old. Nor does anyone pour new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the new wine would burst the skins, the wine itself would be spilt, and the skins be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. Nor does anyone after drinking old wine wish for new, for he says, The old is better. Chapter 6 Now on the second first Sabbath, while he was passing through the wheat fields, his disciples were plucking the ears and rubbing them with their hands to eat the grain. And some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what the law forbids on the Sabbath? Have you never read so much as this? answered Jesus. What David did when he and his followers were hungry, how he entered the house of God and took and ate the presented loaves and gave some to his followers, loaves which none but the priests are allowed to eat? The Son of Man, he added, is Lord of the Sabbath also. On another Sabbath he had gone to the synagogue and was teaching there, and in the congregation was a man whose right arm was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees were on the watch to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, that they might be able to bring an accusation against him. He knew their thoughts, and said to the man with the withered arm, Rise, and stand there in the middle. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I put it to you all whether we are allowed to do good on the Sabbath, or to do evil, to save a life, or to destroy it. And looking round upon them all, he said to the man, Stretch out your arm. He did so, and the arm was restored. But they were filled with madness, and began to discuss with one another what they should do to Jesus. About that time he went out on one occasion into the hill country to pray, and he remained all night in prayer to God. When it was day he called his disciples, and he selected from among them twelve, whom he also named apostles. These were Simon to whom also he had given the name of Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called the Zealot, James' relative Judas, and Judas Iscariot, who proved to be a traitor. With these he came down till he reached a level place, where there was a great crowd of his disciples, and a multitude of people from every part of Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the seaside district of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. And those who were tormented by foul spirits were cured. The whole crowd were eager to touch him, because power went forth from him and cured everyone. Then, fixing his eyes upon his disciples, Jesus said to them, Blessed are you poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who hunger now, because your hunger shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who now weep aloud, because you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you and exclude you from their society and insult you and spurn your very names as evil things for the Son of Man's sake. Be glad at such a time, and dance for joy, for your reward is great in heaven, for that is just the way their forefathers behaved to the prophets. But alas for you rich men, because you already have your consolation. Alas for you who now have plenty to eat, because you will be hungry. Alas for you who laugh now, because you will mourn and weep aloud. Alas for you when men shall all have spoken well of you for that is just the way their forefathers behaved to the false prophets. But to you who are listening to me I say, 
love your enemies seek the welfare of those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who revile you to him who gives you a blow on one side of the face offer the other side also and to him who is robbing you of your outer garment refuse not the under one also to every one who asks give and from him who takes away your property do not demand it back and behave to your fellow men just as you would have them behave to you if you love those who love you what credit is it to you why even bad men love those who love them and if you are kind to those who are kind to you what credit is it to you even bad men act thus and if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive what credit is it to you even bad men lend to their fellows so as to receive back an equal amount nevertheless love your enemies be beneficent and lend without hoping for any repayment then your recompense shall be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked be compassionate just as your father is compassionate judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned pardon and you shall be pardoned give and gifts shall be bestowed on you full measure pressed shaken down and running over shall they pour into your laps for with the same measure that you use they shall measure to you in return he also spoke to them in figurative language can a blind man lead a blind man he asked would not both fall into the ditch there is no disciple who is superior to his teacher but every one whose instruction is complete will be like his teacher and why look at the splinter in your brother's eye instead of giving careful attention to the beam in your own how can you say to your brother brother let me take that splinter out of your eye when all the while you yourself do not see the beam in your own eye vain pretender take the beam out of your own eye first and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye there is no good tree that yields unsound fruit nor again any unsound tree that yields good fruit every tree is known by its own fruit it is not from thorns that men gather figs nor from the bramble that they can get a bunch of grapes a good man from the good stored up in his heart brings out what is good and an evil man from the evil stored up brings out what is evil for from the overflow of his heart his mouth speaks and why do you all call me master master and yet not do what i tell you every one who comes to me and listens to my words and puts them in practice i will show you whom he is like he is like a man building a house who digs and goes deep and lays the foundation on the rock and when a flood comes the torrent bursts upon that house but is unable to shake it because it is securely built but he who has heard and not practiced is like a man who has built a house upon the soft soil without a foundation against which the torrent bursts and immediately it collapses and terrible is the wreck and ruin of that house chapter seven after he had finished teaching all these things in the hearing of the people he went into capernaum here the servant of a certain captain a man dear to his master was ill and at the point of death and the captain hearing about jesus sent to him some of the jewish elders begging him to come and restore his servant to health and they when they came to jesus earnestly entreated him pleading he deserves to have this favor granted him for he loves our nation and at his own expense he built our synagogue for us then jesus went with them but when he was not far from the house the captain sent friends to him with the message sir do not trouble to come i am not worthy of having you come under my roof and therefore i did not deem myself worthy to come to you only speak the word and let my young man be cured for i too am a man obedient to authority and have soldiers under me and i say to one go and he goes to another come and he comes and to my slave do this or that and he does it jesus listened to the captain's message and was astonished at him and he turned and said to the crowd that followed him i tell you that not even in israel have i found faith like that 
and the friends who had been sent on returning to the house found the servant in perfect health shortly afterwards he went to a town called nain attended by his disciples and a great crowd of people and just as he reached the gate of the town they happened to be bringing out for burial a dead man who was his mother's only son and she was a widow and a great number of the townspeople were with her the lord saw her was moved with pity for her and said to her do not weep then he went close and touched the bier and the bearers halted young man he said i command you wake the dead man sat up and began to speak and he restored him to his mother all were awestruck and they gave glory to god some saying a prophet a great prophet has risen up among us others said god has not forgotten his people and the report of what jesus had done spread through the whole of judea and in all the surrounding districts john's disciples brought him an account of all these things so john called two of his disciples and sent them to the lord are you the coming one he asked or is there another that we are to expect the men came to jesus and said john the baptist has sent us to you with this question are you the coming one or is there another that we are to expect he immediately cured many of diseases severe pain and evil spirits and to many who were blind he gave the gift of sight then he answered the messengers go and report to john what you have seen and heard blind men receive sight the lame walk lepers are purified deaf persons hear the dead are raised to life the poor have the good news proclaimed to them and blessed is every one who does not stumble and fall because of my claims when john's messengers were gone he proceeded to say to the multitude concerning john what did you go out into the desert to gaze at a reed waving in the wind but what did you go out to see a man wearing luxurious clothes people who are gorgeously dressed and live in luxury are found in palaces but what did you go out to see a prophet i i tell you and far more than a prophet john is the man about whom it is written see i am sending my messenger before thy face and he shall make ready thy way before thee i tell you that among all of women born there is not one greater than john yet one who is of lower rank in the kingdom of god is greater than he and all the people including the tax gatherers when they listened to him upheld the righteousness of god by being baptized with john's baptism but the pharisees and expounders of the law have frustrated god's purpose as to their own lives by refusing to be baptized to what then shall i compare the men of the present generation and what do they resemble they are like children sitting in the public square and calling out to one another we have played the flute to you and you have not danced we have sung dirges and you have not shown sorrow for john the baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine and you say he has a demon the son of man has come eating and drinking and you say look there is a man who is over fond of eating and drinking he is a friend of tax gatherers and notorious sinners but wisdom is justified by all who are truly wise now one of the pharisees repeatedly invited him to a meal at his house so he entered the house and reclined at the table and there was a woman in the town who was a notorious sinner having learnt that jesus was at table in the pharisee's house she brought a flask of perfume and standing behind close to his feet weeping began to wet his feet with her tears and with her hair she wiped the tears away again while she lovingly kissed his feet and poured the perfume over them noticing this the pharisee his host said to himself this man if he were really a prophet would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him and would know that she is an immoral woman in answer to his thoughts jesus said to him simon i have a word to say to you rabbi say on he replied there were once two men in debt to one moneylender said jesus one owed him five hundred shillings and the other fifty but neither of them could pay anything so he freely forgave them both tell me then which of them will love him most i suppose replied simon 
the one to whom he forgave most. You have judged rightly, Jesus rejoined. Then, turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has made my feet wet with her tears, and then wiped the tears away with her hair. No kiss did you give me, but she from the moment I came in has not left off tenderly kissing my feet. No oil did you pour even on my head, but she has poured perfume upon my feet. This is the reason why I tell you that her sins, her many sins, are forgiven, because she has loved much but he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then the other guests began to say to themselves, Who can this man be who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has cured you. Go and be at peace. Chapter 8 Shortly after this, he visited town after town and village after village, proclaiming his message and telling the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and certain women, whom he had delivered from evil spirits and various diseases, Mary of Magdala, out of whom seven demons had come, and Joanna the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many other women, all of whom contributed to the support of Jesus and his apostles. And when a great crowd was assembling, and was receiving additions from one town after another, he spoke a parable to them. The sower, he said, goes out to sow his seed, and as he sows, some of the seed falls by the wayside, and is trodden upon, or the birds of the air come and peck it up. Another part drops upon the rock, and after growing up, it withers away for want of moisture, Another part falls among the thorns, and the thorns grow up with it and stifle it. But some of the seed falls into good ground, and grows up and yields a return of a hundred for one. While thus speaking, he cried aloud and said, Listen, everyone who has ears to listen with! The disciples proceeded to ask him what this parable meant. To you, he replied, it is granted to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But all others are taught by parables, in order that they may see and yet not see, and may hear and yet not understand. The meaning of the parable is as follows. The seed is God's message. Those by the wayside are those who have heard, and then the devil comes and carries away the message from their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the people who on hearing the message receive it joyfully, but they have no root. For a time they believe, but when trial comes, they fall away. That which fell among the thorns means those who have heard, but as they go on their way, the message is stifled by the anxieties, wealth, and gaieties of time, and they yield nothing in perfection. But as for that in the good ground, it means those who, having listened to the message with open minds and in a right spirit, hold it fast and patiently yield a return. When anyone lights a lamp, he does not cover it with a vessel or hide it under a couch. He puts it on a lampstand, that people who enter the room may see the light. There is nothing hidden which shall not be openly seen, nor anything secret which shall not be known and come into the light of day. Be careful, therefore, how you hear, for whoever has anything, to him more shall be given, and whoever has nothing, even that which he thinks he has, shall be taken away from him. Then came to him his mother and his brothers, but could not get near him for the crowd. But he was told, Your mother and brothers are standing on the edge of the crowd, and want to see you. My mother and my brothers, he replied, are these who hear God's message and obey it. One day he went on board a boat, both he and his disciples, and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. So they set sail. During the passage he fell asleep, and there came down a squall of wind on the lake, so that the boat began to fill, and they were in deadly peril. So they came and woke him, crying, Rabbi, Rabbi, we are drowning! Then he roused himself and rebuked the wind and the surging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Where is your faith? he asked them. 
But they were filled with terror and amazement, and said to one another, Who then is this? For he gives orders both to wind and waves, and they obey him. Then they put into shore in the country of the Gerasenes, which lies opposite to Galilee. Here, on landing, he was met by one of the townsmen who was possessed by demons. For a long time he had not put on any garment, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and said in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of God Most High? Do not torture me, I beseech you. For already he had been commanding the foul spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized and held him, and they had repeatedly put him in chains and fetters, and kept guard over him. But he used to break the chains to pieces, and impelled by the demon, to escape into the desert. "'What is your name?' Jesus asked him. "'Legion!' he replied, because a great number of demons had entered into him, and they besought him not to command them to be gone into the bottomless pit." Now there was a great herd of swine there feeding on the hillside, and the demons begged him to give them leave to go into them, and he gave them leave. The demons came out of the man and left him, and entered into the swine, and the herd rushed violently over the cliff into the lake, and were drowned. The swineherds, seeing what had happened, fled and reported it both in town and country, whereupon the people came out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus, and they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were terrified. And those who had seen it told them how the demoniac was cured. Then the whole population of the Gerasenes and of the adjacent districts begged him to depart from them, for their terror was great. So he went on board and returned. But the man from whom the demons had gone out earnestly asked permission to go with him, but he sent him away. Return home, he said, and tell there all that God has done for you. So he went and published through the whole town all that Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus was returning, the people gave him a warm welcome, for they had all been looking out for him. Just then there came a man named Jair, a warden of the synagogue, who threw himself at the feet of Jesus, and entreated him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter about twelve years old, and she was dying. And as he went, the dense throng crowded on him. And a woman who for twelve years had been afflicted with hemorrhage, and had spent on doctors all she had, but none of them had been able to cure her, came close behind him and touched the tassel of his robe, and instantly her flow of blood stopped. "'Who is it touched me?' Jesus asked. And when all denied having done so, Peter and the rest said, Rabbi, the crowds are hemming you in and pressing on you. Someone has touched me, Jesus replied, for I feel that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, perceiving that she had not escaped notice, came trembling, and throwing herself down at his feet, she stated before all the people the reason why she had touched him, and how she was instantly cured. Daughter, said he, your faith has cured you. Go and be at peace. While he was still speaking, someone came to the warden of the synagogue from his house, and said, Your daughter is dead. Trouble the rabbi no further. Jesus heard the words, and said to him, Have no fear. Only believe, and she shall be restored to life. So he came to the house, but allowed no one to go in with him but Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. The people were all weeping aloud and beating their breasts for her, but he said, Leave off wailing, for she is not dead, but asleep. And they jeered at him, knowing that she was dead. He, however, took her by the hand and called aloud, Child, awake! And her spirit returned, and instantly she stood up, and he directed them to give her some food. Her parents were astounded, but he forbade them to mention the matter to anyone. The end of chapters 5 through 8 of the Gospel according to Luke, from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.